What's up, Salt Strong Nation? Joe Simons, like Simons, got Luke Simons, got Shauna Simons. She's fighting a trout. We are trolling for trout right now. This is one of the best ways to get kids on fish where you're not sitting in a spot Keep catching rod, nothing. Rod tip up a little bit, Shauna. And we're just trolling some slam shadies right here along the grass flat. Yeah, the uh, the, the bait's been hard to get and the, the places were out of, uh, of shrimp. Oh, nice trout. Nice, Shahana. It's all right, that's good, that's good. Yeah, so we're uh, what we're doing is we're just getting some slam shadies and trolling it, trolling on the edge of the channels. And these trout, really everything around here will eat it. So this, no, we have to oh. let this guy go. Whoa, whoa. Dude, that's a nice one, Shauna. Still for that's a that's a solid trout. So that's spot of seed trout, nice catch there, Shauna. This is just a really fun fish. They're aggressive. They uh, they live usually on the edge of the channel, so they're easy to access. You don't have to have a specialty flats boat. That one is released. Slam shade is ready to rock. Let's go do it again, huh, Shauna? Yeah. And so doing this type of fishing, it's super easy to do. And it's one, it's one of the best ways to get kids out and just out fishing, especially if you don't have a lot of time to fish. You can cover a lot of water. It's not like light bait fishing where if you don't know an exact spot to go to, you're gonna have a really hard time catching fish. We're, we're basically constantly covering water. Um, we're just looking for certain types of things throughout the seasons. Right now is the edges of the flats. And, uh, and just cast and wait. Cast it out there and just hold on to it. And the cool thing about paddle tails on why they're so effective is that, first of all, they flat out work, but also you can, you can feel if you have any sort of grass on your line or not. So you can basically feel that, that paddle tail just doing this little thumping. You can feel, oh, I just had a hit. You can feel the, uh, the pulsating of the paddle tail. And as soon as you don't feel that, that means you have a weed. Uh, and obviously if you have a fish on, the, the rod's gonna keel over. So yeah, Sean is uh, busy eating some food. <laughs> usually, usually we'd have the, the the kid hold the rod. Shana's, she's got she's got so many fish now. She's uh, she's bored apparently. Yeah, Sean is uh, having the the grown ups do the fun part. But this is the, this is the most fun. So yeah. But the cool thing about this is the is the child can actually feel the strike. They can be they can be more part of the catch. And even these these small trout when you're when they're fighting against the boat, oh. they feel like they're a really big fish. Yeah, I just had a hit there. Yeah, and so earlier we did this before we had uh, the cameras rolling for the podcast. Let me face this way so the mic's not in the wind, a little bit windy today. But we were coming out to here to the bay, and right near Luke's dock we saw some birds diving right near a flat. And that's an automatic sign, especially in the morning, just go check it out. And so we did the same thing. We literally just put one, one rod out, had Shauna uh, make a little cast out there, and was holding it, and what, within a couple minutes, Really, just that first pass, she caught a trout to kick off yep. the day. So, I mean, just what a what an easy way to start the day with kids to get them on a fish right away. I mean, now she's caught quite a few. I, I, I use the word bored, but she's quite honestly just content, uh, which is even better. Is uh, when you bring a lot of kids along, and now she's getting her little uh, 11:30 snack, and uh, we can do a little bit more trolling here. And, and it's a great way to find the fish too. Uh, we found some good honey holes. That, uh, that we had passed by earlier. Remember that one near Fort DeSoto? Yep. Right, it was right near the ramp. Some, we passed by someone, everyone was passing by, and we caught, I was like four different species there, all in that one spot because we happened to be trolling, and uh, we're just getting hit after hit after hit. Uh, just a fun way to kind of explore a new area, and uh, especially with kids, let them do their thing on the front of the boat. She's sitting there having her little Santa Fe salad, and. We're gonna to try to catch a few more trout. I'm gonna check mine. I felt a, a little bit of, uh, as Luke said, with the paddle tail, you can feel when something feels off. Well, it still looks good. I'm gonna push it down, push it up a little bit. I always wanna check it every once in a while. But talk about where we are. What, what, what kind of depth are we in, Luke? Yeah, so in general, it's like three to five foot of depth is good. And, and that's the reading on the, you know, on the, the uh, the unit, which means it's probably out another foot or so, but uh, yeah, generally you want you want it you don't want to be up in the shallows. First of all, you're going to be chewing up the ground, which is never a good thing. But uh, but in most cases, most of the fish will be just off the ledge. And so right now, we actually kind of have an open expanse, and there's a, there's a lot of seagrass out here with potholes, and uh, and the fish are just scattered around. And so there's two ways to to cover this. One is to troll like we're doing, and the other is to drift and just cast. Uh, this way you cover the most the most water the most the quickest 
And if, you know, if you're taking a kid out who's not the best caster, this is going to be the best odds of them actually catching fish. Um, so, so it's really, again, just about the covering the ground. And then once you find a spot with a bunch of fish, that's when you can, uh, you can fish it more slowly, right? Where you can go and, uh, and drift through or even anchor down if, it, if the spot's good enough. When you get in a good spot, you're going to be doubling up. You'll, you'll know when you're in the good spot. And, uh, and so right now we're just covering ground. Haven't done this in a while, so not sure exactly where these fish have been. Lately, I've been targeting more of the, the, uh, the, the more challenging fish, the really big trout up in the shallows. And that's not, that's not what you want to take kids out doing. Yes, you'll catch some fish, but, but the odds of catching a bunch, of keeping them engaged and keeping them interested, it's just not worth the risk. So we're out here doing this. And, uh, and so far, at least having some luck, I feel like I might have just gotten a weed on. Yeah, I've had a couple little, little bumps. And so we're both, I think you have a one fourth ounce as well. Yep. You've got, Luke's got that trout eyes, which is the... I have the Texas eye on this one. Oh, you this have the Texas eye on that one. Yes, yeah, so this is the Texas eye. This is, this is basically a, a way to, to have a jig head that's weedless. So I, I like this for trolling. So it's a little jig head that's wobbling and then a worm hook. And this thing, uh, this thing gets, gets results. And then I've got a one fourth ounce redfish eye. I normally use the trout eye with the smaller Slam Shitty 2.0. But I was trying out this big boy. You know, we got the bomber. This is the Z-Man. Uh, what is it? The scented paddler Z, the big boy, the five inch. We caught a couple of nice trout on this earlier today. So uh, I'm just sticking with it and seeing what happens here. But one fourth ounce to me seems kind of like the ideal. Um, I mean, Luke's barely kind of got it in gear. We're only going, well, we're not even at, what, how many oh, RPMs? Oh, oh man, I just had to hit. We're bare. We're uh, yeah, we're yeah, seven thousand RPM. Yeah, seven thousand. Yeah, seven thousand. Slow, just barely over, barely over idle. And so you can do this in a kayak. Dave, Dave Otty, one of our insider members, was kind of the guy that turned us on to this a couple years back, where uh, he ended up catching a nice snook and I think a trout too, just in his kayak, trolling back, just throwing a slam shady off the back, while he uh, he paddled back to the campsite. Yeah, redfish as well. He's caught a bunch of reds doing it. Yep. So great. Uh, Great way to catch some fish and cover some territory and give Ooh. give the kids a little break to eat some, another strike. eat some food. Must be a lot of ladyfish. Ladyfish are very good at striking and missing. Ooh. And yeah, with uh, rod, same deal. I mean, that's a beauty. You don't need anything new. I I like I love my TFOs. You guys know the seven six. This is a medium, and uh, this is a three. It's either tw yeah, three thousand fuego. Love my fuegos. Just can't get those suckers in stock. Come on, Diver, what's going on? You listening to this? Man, it has been the craziest. We're going to do a whole podcast on kind of the state of the industry. It, it's absolutely nuts. And if you guys saw some of the latest headlines, Texas, you know, where a lot of oil and petroleum, I mean, and even a lot of the plastics and plastisol is all getting... Uh, getting made manufactured there. They're all having a shortage because of the Texas freeze. So now all these uh, soft plastic injection molding companies, they're having trouble getting all the plastisol for these soft plastic lures. Yeah, I mean, it's just been absolutely madness. And if, you know, if you've been on our store, the fishstrong.com store, you, hopefully you guys realize that we're not purposely out of stuff because we like being out. We would love to be selling all of you more stuff every single day. Uh, and we have well over $500,000 worth of pending orders, some that go back to 2020 to put in perspective. Normally, we could put an order in with anyone from Daiwa, Penn, Z-Man, and uh, you know, about a, about a four week turnaround time, sometimes two if they had it right there. But four weeks was kind of like worst case scenario. And now like we're high five and if we can get something in, in four months. It's, uh, it's been brutal. If, if you're watching and you're wondering, hey, why didn't have Joe have his line? We just pass a bunch of weeds, and uh, so I'm gonna cast back out there now once we get out of that weed line. It's usually it's a easy way to get weeds all over. Although that underwater footage, dude, that was crazy. Yeah, they'll still hit with the weed on it. You guys see that? The underwater trout footage Luke, Luke had? Their trout's still coming up and nailing the Slam Shady paddle tail even with weeds on it. Uh, that was, I mean, that was incredibly insightful to see how these trout, that's probably another reason why this whole mono versus floor doesn't really matter. They didn't even saw the line. They didn't see anything but the back. 
I mean, they were right. I mean, they were underneath it. I, I don't know how they. Yeah, I mean, they would only see it from the side as the lure's first approaching. But um, yeah, as they're as they're coming up to investigate, yeah, they're not seeing line at all. They're they're no. looking at that lure. Yeah, that and was... even then, I had I had the highest end fluoro that I have. It's the Seaguar Premier, and you can easily see the line in the water. It's definitely not invisible. Well, not to mention you had a six-inch black camera hanging from the leader. The thing. Yeah, it's like when they see a lure they want, they're going to go eat it. Crazy. Yeah, that was so insightful. Well, hopefully we're going to find this uh, school of trout here soon. A little skip over there into that mangrove line. I haven't had a bite in a, in a few minutes. Shauna, better scarf that food down. We're going to be in the feeding zone soon. Different type of feeding zone. Come catch a few more trout. Maybe even a ladyfish. Kids love the ladyfish. And when you get a big ladyfish to hit when you're trolling, it feels like you've got a 10 pound redfish on. I mean, like literally drag screaming out. And then all of a sudden, put it in neutral and you realize it's just a ladyfish and you were going fast. <laughs> but man, it is fun, right? When that a big fish hits. Yeah, it's a blast. <laughs> Like, what in the world? Even just an, oh, there we go. Oh, man, I just got hammered right there. But yeah, even just a normal size, a normal size like trout, like a 15, 18 inch trout, feels like it's a big redfish. They just, they just turn and fight against that motor, and man, it's a rush. But yeah, a lot of mackerel doing this, you can catch all sorts of species. Yeah, something just hammered me. It was probably a big ladyfish. Interesting, you're getting all the hits over there now. As soon as we get the cameras going, it looks like I'm gonna make sure we position the boat where I get all the fish. Yeah, but generally this has been, this is slow. This is, um, if we didn't have, if we weren't doing this podcast, I would have picked up and moved already. Um, usually the fish are there, you're gonna be catching them. And, and there's just not a lot of fish here right now. So in general, I would just pick up and move. I'll just pick up and move like the other side of this channel. Um, and just kind of pick up, move, pick up, move, and, and then you just find the most fish quicker doing that. Usually, you know, usually if the area is good, they've got it's got a lot more fish. And, so and as it gets warmer, it's going to get better and better. A few other you know. tips while we're kind of moving moving spots here, because remember, all these podcasts we do are live, no cuts, good, the bad, the ugly, is to keep your rod tip down. Even when you know Shauna first was doing it this morning, she had the tendency because I'm always trying to keep a rod tip up. She's reeling in fish, but when you're trolling, you know we're not trolling for marlin and stuff up on top you want this thing to be diving down a little bit deeper and so notice i got the rod tip almost to the water and trying to keep it as low as possible and also too if you feel any type of weed you can see some we're passing by some weeds here you'll you'll usually feel it you can just do a quick little pop and sometimes that even will attract the strike because you're having a little bit more of a drop when you pop it and let it go back but that's a good way to get weeds off real quick and normally oh i just got a weed there you can feel it Normally, oh, you won't have to bring your line all the way back in. Yeah, that's a little bit better now. Swimming, swimming like normal. Uh, and then, don't once you feel that strike, don't keep it down. That's when you're going to get the run tip up to uh, to reel it back in. And uh, it, it, for some of you, it seems obvious, but we've seen a lot of people on the boat. That, that don't do that, where they have it one way or the other all the time, and that can be a recipe for disaster. Um, other things that we've uh, that we've used, I, I've never used any hard baits trolling of you, but I guess you could. I've done it for bass a lot. They'll definitely work, but the problem with hard baits, especially areas like this with a lot of floating grass, is that those hard baits have troubles, and they're just more prone to, to catch onto the weeds. The, these weedless, these weedless style jerk baits or the weedless style uh, paddle tails is by far the best. Yeah. Um, but if you're in an area like like up in Jacksonville, we have people that do this up there too, and there there's not as much floating debris in the water. Um, so there you can you can use you can use more more variety. But even still, paddle tails is it's really hard to beat just because that tail gets has so much good motion in there, and I really like the fact that that you can just feel the vibration and know that it's good. Yep, yep. So a few more things that we're working on. Just so you guys know, we're working with uh, Z-Man coming up with the Slam Shady Shrimp. 
Oh yes, yeah, Slam Shady Shrimp. Got a couple new, uh, got a couple new paddle tail colors that we've been uh, testing. All I can tell you is uh, a couple of them are going to be bright, and uh, and they're going to stand out. And they're going to pop, and they're working. So excited about that. Uh, we got that bull, the Bull Bay Custom Salt Strong rods. Depending on when you're listening to this, uh, I know we've got a big order coming in April. We had those 25. Uh, we call them kind of the demo rods, really one of a kind because those are all custom made. I mean, someone's literally doing every piece there by hand in Lakeland, Florida, where Bull Bay is based, uh, right near our home office, actually. And uh, 25 lucky Insider members got that and already seeing some really cool pictures and fishing reports. Those Bull Bay rods. We've got the this new BG, the Daiwa BGMQ reels. Finally, they came out with the 2500s. We were one of the first tackle stores at fishstrong.com in the whole country to get them. I don't even think Bass Pro had them in their store yet. They had some for online sale only. So uh, we were really excited to get those and uh, I know it sold out pretty quick, but got more uh, more coming. And hopefully those Fuegos, I mean, that's, that's continued to be, you know, one of the top selling, if not the top selling reel in that 2500 to 3000 series range uh, in the whole country, you know, out of all the brands, Daiwa, Shimano, Pin, etc. And it's all gone. They just, they go so fast. Like we've had to tell our own team members and all our employees that we can't even buy them uh, because we obviously, you know, we want to serve you guys, the customers first. So we're all, we're all kind of sitting here jonesing for some uh, Fuegos, starting to get some uh, some weeds on this thing. Yeah, we just, we just crossed the channel. So we now should be getting in a better strike zone. A lot of weeds out here today. Yes. Um, what else we What else we got coming, Luke? In terms yeah. of the new stuff. Oh, the red hat, the the popular red hat for insiders only. So that's something that's not going to be for sale. Uh, the one I'm wearing here, Cody, zoom in on that bad boy. That's the unsinkable salt strong hat. Incredibly popular. That one is available out there on the store at fishstrong.com. But we wanted to come up with something that that was bright and would stand out and would represent insiders only. And so we came up with a, a red hat and no, it's not Donald Trump and no, it's not Forrest Gump. We've heard both of those. Uh, we just wanted something that instantly, if you saw it, you would know that you're an insider. So it's not for sale, it's for insiders only. And once again, depending on when you listen to this, if we still have them, we were doing a freebie. Uh, just another way to hook up our insiders and, and, and tell you how much we appreciate you. Where as long as you just spent, because it's a $20 hat, so as long as you spent $20 or more in the in the store here in the month of April, we uh, give you a free hat, completely free, unsinkable red salt strong hat. And uh, one per person, at some point we might come out and make them, oop, I had a hit there, make them available for insiders only, but it will never be for sale to the public. So you know, if you see a red salt strong hat, you're basically either a salt strong employee or an insider member. Either way, family. So we're kind of pumped about that. I, I just, I love these hats. Oh, yeah, you got yours on too. Yeah, they're the most comfortable hats. Man. That's all I wear now. So comfortable. They dry so fast. It is my other daughter, little Savannah, found out last weekend in the boat. They are unsinkable. We were taking off out of Placida Luke and yeah. flew right off her head. <laughs> But even with another boat going by, we turned back around and there it was. Floating up at the top. Well, Luke, you've uh, definitely put us in a dead zone. So let's yeah, talk about 90-10. We're going to turn this into a learning lesson. These fish just what, aren't cooperating what, today. We're what in. could we have done better? Uh, just sometimes they don't cooperate. Sometimes you never know where they're going to be. We're in the we're in the 90-10s right now. We're on the edge of the channel. And we've got a good lure on. And so now it's just a matter of just finding where they are. I've been, just been looking, what I've been doing is just looking for birds, for diving birds, let the birds tell us where they are, and these weeds are driving me crazy. So since I have this Texas eye jig head, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna embed the, uh, the hook in the bait. So as I, as I mentioned before, you know, the cool thing about paddle tails is you can feel when you have a weed on. So when this weed's on there, it's sitting down there and it's dragging, it's dragging, and that's preventing that paddle tail from thumping. And so as soon as I felt it, no thumps, I knew there was a weed. So one way to make this weedless is to embed the hook on there. 
And so now there's literally nothing for that weed to snag onto, unless it just snags onto the head of the paddle tail. So now we're in business. The problem with that though, is that it's gonna decrease the, uh, the hookup rate, but it's worth it. You can go up there. Just to not have to deal with those weeds all the time. Sean, is, Sean is heading up. Yeah, Sean is heading up to the crow's nest. Keep, keep going, you got it. One foot at a time. Yeah, we're also heading to Isla Morada. Gonna be fishing with Captain Hollywood for some uh, springtime tips. And we've seen a lot of people going over to Oh, there we go area. Oh, Luke's this got a, a nice one. That's a big oh, fish. Pulling out drag. <laughs> oh, I just got one too. Oh. This, if this is a trout, this is a really big trout. I'm guessing a ladyfish. Oh, I just had a nice hit too. Shauna, you want on? <laughs> You're up <laughs> there? All right, well, this is... I'm not sure what this is, but it is... All right, well, that was a good spot. I had it hit right after you did. So you had a spot. Cool. So now we know we know we're in a good spot. I'm going to go ahead and just slow us down. So that was as soon as I just made this thing weedless, got those weeds off the line. Significantly, this could be, uh, looks like a jack. Yep. So jacks, you can catch a little bit of everything doing this. And that jack felt like a 10 pound fish. <laughs> when that thing yeah, saw drag, drag coming out. Yeah, this, this puppy was pulling out a good amount of drag. And that's just, uh, again, another benefit of this trolling. Let's get this guy. Not a giant one, a whole lot of fun. And we'll let this guy go. Oh, wow. Did you see that, Cody? What oh, man. Manta Ray jumped completely like four feet out of the air and did that. I don't know if you could hear that pop. Never know what you're going to see out here. Dang. All right, let's, uh, let's keep on trolling. That was awesome. All right, so anyhow, we're going to... We're gonna do a little marathon, weather permitting. Uh, I'm sorry, not marathon, Flamingo, we'll head over that way. A lot of members have been asking about that. I'm guessing here was summertime and springtime coming, taking the family and, whoop, there we go. I'm on. Nice. This is more like it. This feels more like a trout here. I don't know, it could be a little jacky though. Yeah, and this is, and this is again, if we weren't filming, I would have been, I would have been running a gun a little bit more, but um, this is what you want to find. So now that we've had multiple strikes in one area, now we can kind of do some circles. We can zigzag through here. Looks like a trout. Yep. Or is that a giant lizard fish? No, that is a crazy <laughs> giant a, lizard fish. That's Holy smokes. That's one of the smoke. biggest lizard fish I've seen. Now, the, now Sean is excited. Dude, it nailed that five inch. Now look, now she's coming down. Isn't, isn't that uh, funny? Let's keep that. I've heard those are actually good to eat. I'm are gonna, you serious? I'm gonna eat it. Yeah. I really? Was, yeah, I was tempted to bring All right, Shauna, come here. I wanted to bring home some dinner today. I was hoping to get some Spanish mackerel. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll try some lizard fish tonight. Well, that's definitely uh, big enough to clean. Yeah, so that's, that's a five inch paddle tail that thing just destroyed. And, and yes, that, here, you wanna, here, you wanna flip them in? Sure. Ready? Flip them in. Ooh. Right, put them in the face. Whoa. Do they have, do they have cheese? Yeah, I've heard they taste good. I've been curious to try them out. That guy's, that guy's eat worthy. You see his little teeth? Oh! It's like a little mini piranha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put that back out. There you go. That might, might snack on a couple. Yeah, he might. All right, that was pretty funny. Oh, now the birds are showing up. That was a giant. Nothing for you. That was a giant lizard fish. Yeah, I, I thought for sure just seeing the silhouette. If you guys are listening, see a pretty big silhouette, 14, 15 inch, you just think it's a trout. Oh. And it was doing a, a normal trout head shape. Yeah, that was crazy. Too. That was, uh, that could be a PB lizard fish for me. <laughs> Didn't think big, I was going to say that today on the podcast. Big day. Yeah, real big day. <laughs> real big day. Oh, that's another little pop there. All right, so now we, we found a we found a reputable area now here. Isn't that funny? Just oh, you know what? Well, I think I, I think I might have just no. It's definitely that uh something little. Um, anyhow, back to where we were. We're going to be heading down to Isla Mirada, fishing with Captain Hollywood. So if you guys have any specific tips. Last time we did the bridge fishing, we did the patch fishing. 
Uh, some shark oh, there fishing. we go. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. That could be another. That could be a jack. Nope. Oh no, big lady fish, Shawnee. Big you want lady, it? Shawnee, your turn. Let's go. You got it. Keep rod tip up. You got it. Yeah, and if you want the stand, hey, stand up, stand up, get that leverage. And if you want the fight to continue, hey, you, gotta, you gotta stand up. Just keeping there the uh, keeping the boat engaged. We'll make sure that fight lasts as long as possible. Keep rod tip up, rod tip up. There you go. <laughs> yeah, the kids love the ladyfish. Rod tip up. Keep it up, 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 up. All right, now Luke can slow it down. All right, let me help you, sweetie. Dude, that's a beast. Oh, I got Whoa. one. Sean, Luke's I got on. one. Luke's on. All right, All right. go get Luke's now. Ready for the next one? Okay, that one. All right, there you are. You got it? See, we had to wait a good 20 minutes, but now. Oh, did it come off? Oh. All right, reel it up. Let's see See if it's uh. Now nah, we're more there. of a honey hole. There, Is it? All right, keep on reeling. No, you, you know. Yeah, something's still on there. Really? It's a little small guy? Yeah, something's still on there. All right, sweet. Yeah, and so now that we have this no, good spot, off. we're going we're gonna to keep going down this bank, and then as soon as it starts slowing down, we're just going to turn around and go right back. Because yeah, um, right now we're actually going into the current, which isn't ideal. But again, I didn't want to pick up and move in the middle of this the podcast, so we're just, we're just going. And uh, so this puppy's weedless. Get this guy out there again. And as far as distance behind the boat, it, um, it, it, there's not like a one-size-fits-all. What you want to do is you just want to make sure to have I like to have about like a, a good cast or maybe a little bit more out. Um, that way it's just, you know, it's pretty far behind the boat, but you just don't want to have too much and then you're going to be dragging on the bottom, right? The, the more line you let out, the deeper it's going to be diving. And, uh, and so if you're feeling the bottom a lot, you can either reel line in or put the rod tip up or both. And so you basically, the, the goal should be to get as close to the bottom as possible without getting, without getting snagged. And so generally with this quarter ounce weight right now, we're in five feet of water, um, rod tip down for sure here, because this, this will generally run about maybe four feet down. And so we're, uh, we're just going just above, just above the seagrass. All right now, it looks like we're about to, we're about to lose the, uh, the seagrass patches. So we'll probably do a turn here in a second. All right, so go back to what you, who told you lizard fish taste good? I uh, saw it on uh, like deer meat or someone. No, what's the the uh, guy in Pensacola? You had him on a podcast. A real, a Motley. Guy. Oh, angler up with Brand. Yeah, Brand. Yeah, yeah. He had a clean one. He said it was delicious. Huh. We gotta do a separate video on that. Yep. Interesting. So I've been curious to try one out. And not 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 curious enough to go target them. <laughs> but you know, see, that'd uh, be a funny uh, episode. See a 14, 15 inch. I think it's like ladyfish. Like whenever you actually try to catch them, they're hard to catch. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's worth a try. That's funny. And again, we'll have a high chance of getting some mackerel out here. That was actually what I was planning on doing for dinner night: some blackened mackerel. They haven't been cooperating yet, but the day is young. Oh. Up oh, weeds. All right, but yeah, that's uh, that's up next. All here in uh, the month of uh, April, we're continuing to do our live training every single Thursday with our in center members. So that's where we get on a, a Zoom call, taking advantage of all this online technology with uh, with our members, and we go there and dissect spots. We uh, we just basically take take questions and talk about what's working right now, and then you know every Friday morning is when the smart fishing game plan goes live and that's where Luke gets on on our big overall map starting in Texas and all the way throughout the Gulf into Florida and then all the way up to Virginia area and talks about just what's working right now how to go catch inshore saltwater slams in every one of those states based on trends based on what's working right now and uh, sorry the winds kind of bad here so I'm trying to stay out of it as much as I can um, sometimes weather doesn't cooperate the way you want it to especially these live podcasts but um of course whoop, oh i got a oh nice hit there of course we'll have a lot of new stuff coming to the to the store i can't tell you everything just yet but uh, a lot of cool things that have been in in production and been uh testing in uh april and may 
a lot, a lot of cool stuff coming in into June. And of course, Blackout Chom, every time we get another batch in, oh, there we go. That uh, that seems to sell out. Things jump around like crazy. Trying to want to reel in? No? You're, you're that bored? Oh, here come the birds already. Yeah, that Blackout Chom, uh, if you guys haven't tried it, definitely try out some of that. It's a little topping. Let's see if I can do a quick release. Yeah, another big lady. A lot of times they'll jump off. Of course, like Luke said, we've had times where we were trying to catch ladyfish for tarpon bait. Whoa, get out of here, bird. Whoa. And can't even catch them, let alone keep them on the hook. You gotta throw it to the bird. No, no, we don't feed the bird. Yeah, we we'll go the other opposite. Side of the boat. <laughs> Man, that bird is still so stinking quick. All right, that's a sign we're gonna get out of here. And uh, those birds drive me nuts. I don't know if you got that lady fish or not, but at least give it the best chance possible. So yeah, you guys stay tuned, hit us up with questions. Obviously if you're listening to this and, uh, and you wanna see exactly what we are doing, what type of area, I mean, you can see the channel markers around us as we've been kind of turning, uh, go to saltstrone.com forward slash podcast or in the fishing tip section and you'll see it right in there. That's the best place to leave us questions. We've been getting so many questions on, uh, on YouTube it's tough for us to answer all of them. So a lot of times we will, uh, we will kind of direct everyone to the, to the site where we, they come right to us, right to our emails, and we're always quick to get back to them. That's the best place you want to get hold of us. Obviously, join the Insider Club. It's the best way because once you're in the community, you got access to all of us. And, uh, and on top of having access and all the live coaching, you got all the discounts now and all the tackle, 20, up to 20% off or more on everything in the store. Whoa, whoa. And of course, the amazing community and all the water fishing tips. Uh, this is just the free stuff we're putting out there to the public. We save the very best for our insider members and all the uh, all the spot dissections and really focusing in on spots based on trends, not just based on GPS spot. Because we can come back to the same spot a month from now and it can be completely dead uh, based on the wind, based on the water temperature, based on what's happening here around us, and based on where the bait's moving. So. Hope that, uh, hope that helps guys. Hopefully this is a good one. It was one of these where we came out with a whole different plan with, uh, with Shauna. We were going to do some light bait fishing, a little bit windier than we thought. Cold front had just come through and so it was a little bit tougher to get, uh, to get the white bait we wanted. And we didn't, we're not going to go buy the stuff. So uh, we decided, hey, let's just do some trolling here for 30, 40 minutes and see what happens. So caught a few fish. Shauna had some fun, even had a chance to reel in a couple of fish and now I get a we do have a couple of pinfish in there to play with, and now we're going to see if we can catch something else for us. So, guys, we appreciate you. We love you. And Ooh. let us, whoop, look at a little Yeah, another bite. Well, every time we, like, try to end a podcast, the bite picks up. What's up with that? It's just how it happens. All right, guys. Peace. Good times. We, we out. Saltstorm.com. Come join us in the club. Woo -hoo. Bye -bye. Woo. Woo. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best fishing club in America because we actually guarantee that you'll catch more fish while saving money on all the tackle you need. We do this through premium education, our exclusive insider community, and huge discounts on the best tackle for saltwater anglers. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.